my fellow friend, Low Sovereign Thinkers. Thank you for tuning to the LLP Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful realm of planet Earth. And today's date is Tuesday, October 5th, 2021. Yes, I'm just going to do this one pretty brief. No rant or anything like that. But I've been, um, got posted on a couple of things. Uh, one of the things here, which is uh, considered Fed's no best intervention and so forth. And potential false flag or socially engineered event in the very near future. Well, I'm going to be reading this here from the Department of Justice. Came out yesterday. The press release of the Office of Public Affairs. This one here is Justice Department addresses violent threats against school officials and teachers. If I'm correct, it's going to be episode 1398. All right. So as it reads here. Sign an increase in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school board members, teachers, and workers in our nation's public schools. Today, Attorney General Merrick G- B. Garland directed the FBI and U.S. Attorney's offices to meet in the next 30 days with federal, state, tribal, territorial, and local law enforcement leaders to discuss strategies for addressing this disturbing trend. These sessions will be, will be will open dedicated lines of communication for threat reporting, assessment, and response by law enforcement. As it reads here, quote, threats against public servants are not only illegal, they run counter to our nation's core values, wrote Attorney General Garland. Those who dictate their time and energy to ensuring that our children receive a proper education in a safe environment deserve to be able to do their work without fear for their safety. I hear projection makes them manly. Absolutely. But it's okay for the students to be dictated, doctrinated, and treated like peasants. That's okay. As long as they're doing their job, right? A lot of double speak. According to the Attorney General's memorandum, the, Depart- the Justice Department will launch a series of additional efforts in the coming days designed to address the rise in criminal conduct direct towards school personnel. Those efforts are expected to include the creation of a task force consisting of representatives from departments, criminal division, national security division, civil rights division, the executive office for the U.S. Attorneys, and the FBI, the Community Relations Service, and the Office of Justice Program to determine how federal enforcement tools can be used to prosecute these crimes and ways to assist the state, tribal, territorial, and local law enforcement where threats of violence may not constitute federal crimes. The Department of Justice will also create specialized training and guidance for local school boards and school administrators. This training will help school board members <coughs> excuse me, and other potential victims understand the type of behavior that constitutes threats, how to report threatening conduct to the appropriate law enforcement agencies, and how to capture and preserve evidence of threatening conduct to aid in the investigation and prosecution of these crimes. Threats of violence against school board members, officials, and workers in our nation's public schools can be reported to the public, to the FBI's National Threat Operations Center, or NTOC, via its national tip line, 1-800-CALL-FBI, and online through the FBI website, fbi.gov slash tips. To assure that, th- that threats are communicated to the appropriate authorities, NTOC will direct credible threats to the FBI field offices for coordination with the U.S. Attorney's Office and law enforcement partners as appropriate. Reporting threats of violence through NTOC will help the federal government identify increased threats in specific jurisdictions as well as coordinated widespread efforts to intimidate educators and education workers. But if they tell you to shut up, get rid of them for criticizing us, that's exceptional. A lot of doublespeak here, can we say? 
And the fact is, they have no business on telling the people of the state and local government, local, local, um, governments how to do their job. Can we say federal intervention, centralization? Absolutely. And we're really dawns them because I've been listening to a lot of these speeches. I didn't hear any threats. Direct threats. Not, nothing egregious. They're highly criticizing. Why should their tax dollars go to propaganda, mind control, enslaving our student, the students? That's the question. And we got someone here, globalist hack, CFR douchebag himself, Merrick Garland, who is unmerited to be exact, wants to make it a federal hate crime if you criticize or call out your local local servants in the education. Here's the thing. Your tax dollars on the federal level is only 10% beneficial. And they throw like a little carrot. Do things our way, you'll get this money. If not, then they give you nothing. Okay, we'll do it, we'll do it. Like peasants, like throwing crumbs into the field. The rich, the rich bastards, the powers elite, so supposedly. That's like they do. Very similar. And it was interesting because I was reading the memorandum. I was reading the memorandum to get more clarification on here. Now we'll do that. And of course, he wrote this today, of course, by Merrick Garland. In recent months, there's been a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff who participate in the vital work of running our nation's public schools. While spirited debate about policy masters protected under our Constitution, that protection does not extend to threats of violence or efforts to intimidate individuals based on their views. Threats against public service are not only illegal, they run counter to our nation's core values. Those who de- dedicate their time and energy to ensuring that our children receive a proper education in a safe environment deserve to be able to do their work without fear for their safety. The department takes these incidences seriously, incidents seriously, and is committed to using its authority and resources to discourage these threats. Identify them when they occur and prosecute them when appropriate. In the coming days, the the department will announce a series of measures to design to address the rising criminal conduct directed toward school personnel. Coordination and partnership with local law enforcement is critical to implementing these measures for the benefit of our nation's nearly 14,000 public school districts To this end, I am directing the Federal Bureau of Investigation, working with each United States attorney, to convene meetings with federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial leaders in each federal judicial district within 30 days of its issuance of this memorandum. These meetings will facilitate the discussion of strategies for addressing threats against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff, and will open dedicated lines of communication for threat reporting, assessment, and response. The department is steadfast in its co- commitment to protect all people in the United States from violence, threats of violence, and other forms of intimidation and harassment. <laughs> Man, I smell hypocrisy. Absolutely. That's why I smell nothing but hypocrisy. My, oh my. What can we say about that, folks? Not too impressed at all. Well, you know how that goes. But they can do what they want. Liberty for me, but none for thee. They still believe on practicing the J. Edgar Hoover legacy. Wiretapping. Hit, um, hit squads. Of course, harassing others, putting people on files. 
Well, that's okay. Their government is exceptional. I want to tell you this, folks. All these elected servants out there have an oath on protecting and defending both U.S. and their state constitution. That's simple. And the people best interest for what that county or local district how the ch- children should be educated. Not being peasants. No, not using critical race theory. Using communist manifestive literature or anything else totalitarian to be fair, be across the board. Including technocracy. No more Sharia law light. They only make COVID-19, for an example, a 24-7 excuse for everything. Just like what they did with 9-11 20 years ago. And I've been telling people for years, you better start paying attention. Because there's rogue elements in our, you, uh, in our government, whether it's federal, state, or local, will benefit from this. Now let's look at how going on with COVID-19. Same crap, different package. That's why I am a tenter, tenter pro-nullification. It's the state's and local's affairs, not the federal government. Why you should throw your money on to the Department of Education? Only 10% of it is beneficial. That's based on the book, Government Racket, Washing Away from A to Z by Martin Gross. You should read that book. Okay, this is the question. So we should just have the federal government run everything on our lives. The great centralizer. Abraham Lincoln will be envious. Except for when he pissed off the banksters and he got taken out. Interest free money. I know I'm digressing. Sorry about that. I recommend everyone let your local and state government know any commentary and doctrine by the Department of Justice on this matter. In addition, I'm not condoning threats, egregious co- misconduct on the on, on these local servants and their and the education department, and so forth. That's too good for them. There's no fun in that. There's plenty of ways to skin a cat. Get them where it hurts. Homeschooling would be a great solution. Enhance their education. Instead of leaving all your eggs in one basket. Some great information out there. Fantastic books to better your children and yourselves. You can add me to it. Any commandeering doctrine is the key. Federal's Papers 46. Don't have to cooperate. Three things the federal government can do. Treason. Counterfeit money and piracy. That's in the U.S. Constitution. Everything else is invalid. So, based on the memorandum and anything funded for education within these United States is void. Guaranteed under Article 1, Section 10 of our U.S. Constitution. So, you got multiple ways. Of saying no, you're not invited. Get out of our state. We don't need to cooperate with you. Except for treason, counterfeit money, and piracy. That includes child, human child sex trafficking. That's good there. They got their limits. Don't fuel the fire, folks. Defuse it immediately. Well, that will be it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, and sense on this issue, check out whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the quorum. For the merely the footnote of this article on my uh, speaker page. If you want to uh, car- correspond with me, contact me. You can go via email, lookyluck03 at protemmail.com. Do a donate. Go to paypal.me or cash.app forward slash lookyluck3. And that will do. 
Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love and may your guardian spirits be with you.